This is High School Not So Much a Musical, a podcast that takes you on a ride through the peaks and valleys of a high school journey. Here are your presenters, Nitin Jalodanki and Ayush Agarwal. Hello everybody and welcome back to High School Not So Much a Musical. Today we're joined with Mr. Jack Taggart, the host of The Moderate Review. And the purpose of his podcast is to open up on dialogue with those who have a views or opinions that are unpopular, misunderstood, or unknown. So, Mr. Taggart, could you please give us a quick introduction about yourself and what exactly your podcast is? Sure. Um, first, can you just please call me Jack? Um, Mr. Taggart's my my name. My, excuse me, is my father's name. So, um, so a little bit about me. So, um, I grew up in uh, southeastern Arizona and uh gosh um and i went to college at uh, byu idaho which is obviously in idaho and then uh since then um since i graduated last december of 2020 yeah 2020 um i've been living in utah and yeah it's a little bit about me yeah i think that gives us a good introduction of exactly what you do so now as you could go into more about you know, what your podcast is about, like the moderate view, how you kind of came up with it, because we can actually kind of compare stories a bit. So we can talk a little bit about our story, how we kind of got started with our podcast. And then you can talk about like your story, how you got started with your podcast and what, what it's about. So our story started back in around March of this year when we realized due to virtual learning, we kind of weren't learning the uh, practical implications of a lot of the theoretical concepts we were learning in school, because we would, for example, learn, you know, what does supply and demand look like in a perfect market where um, all the conditions are preset so that there's a desired outcome. But that's not how the real world actually works. In the real world, there's a lot Mm -hmm. of other external factors or other variables that result in a different outcome than you would supposedly want. So that's when we really decided that, you know, podcasts are a medium for us to kind of learn about these things. For example, we really got hooked onto a podcast called Freakonomics, which I'm sure you've heard of, super popular podcast. Um, And that kind of helped us learn the practical implications of economics on our everyday lives. And that knowledge really came in handy for our everyday lives and also for the AP micro and macroeconomics exam that we had to take at the end of the year. Um, But we didn't, that's, that's when we got into the back of our mind that, you know, hey, we wanted to start a podcast of our own, but we didn't really act on it until one of our school counselors sent us the opportunity for the uh, New York Times fourth annual podcast contest. And when we entered in that, and we ended up getting 13th out of over 1,500 student entries, that's when we realized, hey, we could actually start doing this, you know, week on a weekly basis where we bring people on, experts in certain fields like you, and then go into those fields super in depth so high schoolers get a better understanding of the different types of fields and opportunities that are in the world around us. Um, So that's kind of how we got started. If you want to share your story about how you got started, that'd be great. Yeah, so that's actually a, a really good question. Um, so really kind of how this started. So I kind of mentioned that um, in previous meetings that um, especially uh, during the 2016 presidential election, we've uh, we've seen a major um, decrease in civility and uh, people trying to really kind of actually understand what, or, or excuse me, a lack of desire to understand what the actual issue is rather than just wanting to do like um, going for a rage and um, just really clickbait. And so it's kind of a journey to be honest with you. So um, I served as a volunteer representative for my church. And so I was kind of a little bit sheltered from that. But after that, I went to college uh, out of state. Like I said, I grew up in Arizona, but then went to Idaho. And during my time there, um, I was just very, very, very fortunate to be able to kind of really just meet different people and become really close friends with those who really had very different backgrounds than I did. So I kind of grew up in this very I guess you can say almost a a nuclear family where I had a father who and and a mother who basically they were married before they had me and my brothers. Um, And, you know, they basically had stable lives. They had always had constant work and were educated, went to college. Whereas meeting other people who really never had this, uh, these opportunities where um, some people, their parents were mentally unstable. what else was it that they just made poor or their parents just made poor life choices even after they had children you know by just randomly uprooting and moving around and um 
how some things I see kind of more of how I saw at the time, more of like some of these social welfare programs, I kind of saw more as a, I guess more of a drain on society. Whereas actually talking with some of these people where they're like, yeah, my, my parents are nuts, but you know, because of this, these programs were able to help me and, and basically just kind of simply just trying to open up and trying to understand where these people are coming from. Um, it kind of really helped me understand. It also helped that, you know, I studied economics in college and kind of how I saw things as well as that, you know, trying to understand the why, why do things happen? That kind of helped me understand, helped, actually helped me be more open to certain ideas and uh, fast forward and plus uh, to now, or actually to actually uh, last March, March of 2020, uh, I had this crazy idea of maybe actually kind of doing something and trying to open up this dialogue and um, I guess you can say I kind of did podcast in the wrong way where I kind of just had this really interesting idea of kind of just inviting people with different perspectives, you know, kind of more of have a group discussion you know, and it's covering more of these topics that you see in the news. But um, anyways, but uh, so I published that actually in March, my first episode in March, and we talked about voter fraud because I was back in yeah, March of 2020. And so that's definitely a major, major uh, topic and uh, we're able to discuss things and um to this day it's still like my most uh, listened uh episode but since then i've kind of had to pivot a little bit more instead of um kind of having these discussions about you know these hot topic issues that are happening in the news today it's rather more of i guess you can say i've taken more of the creative liberty and kind of talking about certain stuff so uh today is uh we're recording on january 3rd and so today i actually released an episode about um some guy excuse me a guy i met um, a while back who he worked on Capitol Hill or the United States Capitol building as a staffer and um, basically he talks about some of the misconceptions that most people have about politicians and um, encourage y'all to give it a listen if you're interested so yeah definitely I think that one thing that you mentioned was the you just recently met with somebody and I think that I had a question really quickly so you said that you mentioned like during our planning meeting that you recently met with someone who like worked in the government during the 2016 election so how did that go and what exactly did you guys talk about so uh I guess more of a disclaimer so uh, I served as a uh, volunteer representative for my church you know you know the church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints or you know those missionaries so those white those guys in white shirts and ties so I was one of those in the DC area and he just so happened to live in the area. He was a, he was a member as well. Uh, we just so happened to live, or where it's, uh, the area in particular where I where we were, where I was assigned to, uh, I guess, volunteer. Uh, we there's a lot of members there who worked on Capitol Hill, and so we kind of worked with that. But um, to give you more of a specific, I guess, to answer your question a little bit more uh, specifically, um, I just kind of talked more about, oh, and we also talked to just more because I was pitching this idea to him more. And he kind of mentioned some things, how uh, some Congress or it's believed that congressmen have this uh, this Cadillac plan of health insurance where he says, no, by law, these politicians are on Obamacare, just like everyone else. Um, other people or other he broke down. There's some misconceptions saying that, you know, there's a lot there that Congress is worthless. They don't do anything, which um which he actually says no, having worked with these guys, they actually do accomplish an awful lot with more like 80% um, bipartisan support. You know, but those are more like the the regular stuff, more like passing a budget, passing the military defense authorization. Um, and he actually even mentioned more of like passing this legislation that um, kind of shortened the national suicide help hotline from like this long nine digit uh, phone number to basically like a three digit number where basically it's easier to remember. And so there's a lot that Congress does. However, things like, you know, hot topics like immigration, abortion, and, um, and I guess maybe, maybe now more recently, uh, I guess more of like the uh, Build Back Better. Yeah, it gets gets bogged down in, um, in oh gosh, um, it, it gets bogged down and people just are not, uh, or politicians are not, or can't seem to compromise or agree on these kinds of policies. So, yeah. You mentioned in your um, matchmaker bio that you're essentially a polymath, and I don't know if that's I'm pronouncing correctly, but essentially for our listeners, what that means is you have a wide array of specialties. Essentially, you're you're well rounded. You have a good understanding of different different topics. Like for example, uh, if you if I'm looking at your podcast right now, and 
the cool thing about it is that you're talking about so many different things. You know, you're talking about politics, you're talking about stereotypes, you're talking about uh, religion, you're talking about fitness, you're talking about like monetary policy, etc. So, um, could you talk about you know what were some of the what were some of the most fa- like what what were some of the most favorite podcasts that you've done, and also. Um, also, what are some of the topics that you are most well versed in? And uh, mm. for example, you talked about how you studied economics in college, so uh, that might make you lean towards the economic side. Yeah. Um, where do I begin? So I wouldn't say I'm necessarily an expert in really kind of really anything right now. Um, mostly, kind of what I've done is more of I. Well, I just will say this also is I've kind of going back to college. I kind of me realizing that. Um, there's a lot that are that you know people have come from these different backgrounds and perspectives and I actually kind of actually started kind of going out and start looking at some of these uh, or kind of researching some of these 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 topics and kind of wanting to kind of learn for myself and so um, but to answer your question probably my more memorable or as for my favorite Ria podcast which actually hasn't dropped yet but um, uh, I think it's in August I think I will be releasing an episode where I actually interview a Catholic exorcist you know, we, where he kind of talks about some of the misconceptions because whenever you are just more, just throwing it out there, when you think of an exorcist, what do you think? Well, it sounds like a very negative connotation. To me. Almost like, like the name of a horror movie, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so exactly. That's my, that's my exact point. So actually kind of actually doing more research and kind of understanding what an exorcism is, you know, doing, I did quite, I think hours of research on it and kind of finding out that, you know, hey, that's really not really the case. You know, that's not what an exorcism is. And, you know, frankly, talking to this exorcist, he actually talks about how he actually consult, he's actually, he, well, he, in the words of him, he says he's trained to be a skeptic. So like, and he openly says not everybody who, or it's everybody who doesn't come to me um, for an exorcism doesn't need an exorcist, doesn't need an exorcism. They just need basically to, to talk to a healthcare professional or there's something else in their lives that, that's bothering them and it's not the demonic that's possessing them so kind of talking more like that and um what i'm actually kind of wanting to do as well and um i've actually been looking more into voodoo as well because uh actually kind of trying to find a voodoo priest you know kind of what actually is voodoo because you know you talk going back to that when exorcism is voodoo kind of has more of this negative connotation where kind of doing more research on it it's really not you know it's yeah voodoo can be used for evil but or but voodoo is also kind of can be used for good you know there's guess you can say there's good voodoo so so yeah so if you could like describe your favorite episode so far that's been released so that people can actually go and listen what do you think is your favorite episode so far and you could explain why maybe it was different or what you learned from it that would be great Ooh. um really good question um probably single-handedly probably one of my more favorite ones actually when i interviewed um a rabbi actually a rabbi because you know we kind of always think more you know i guess whenever you think of a rabbi you think more of like more of the orthodox rabbi type but kind of understanding and interviewing him kind of more more of his views um he actually and i'm kind of realizing this too is probably more of the a more progressive rabbi and um what I guess is why it's my favorite and kind of what made it very different is that, you know, the, um, I was able to ask a glean, especially from that, from my discussion with him, some more of wisdom, more of like, for example, you know, he talked about how asking questions is very important, you know, and basically saying that it is showing that we care, showing that we care when we ask questions. And um, that is, I've been able to kind of carry on that into my, more of my faith traditions, more of like, you know, asking questions is okay. You, know, you don't have to, know everything or it's there's no really no shame in asking hey i don't understand this what's your perspective on this can you help help me understand where you're coming from you know and yeah that's kind of helped strengthen my faith so you've also talked about the importance of understanding and not accepting but at least listening to other people's perspectives because uh as you mentioned the way society has kind of derivated is people are so unopen to other people's perspectives like let's just say theoretically i'm conservative it's very difficult for me to voice my opinion to liberals 
and get my opinion at least like across because in the middle you know they're gonna like both sides of the aisle start raising their voice and there's no real productive conversation um as you mentioned and i think an example of that is when i think some conservative speaker was supposed to go to uc berkeley and there started to be protests at uc berkeley and i'm pretty sure the protests got violent as well just because they didn't want to even let the conservative onto campus and that's where kind of freedom of speech and this whole idea of um free press and censorship kind of all interconnect because in my opinion no matter where which side of the aisle i'm on i should always be open to hearing the other people's perspectives i should be open to letting the conservative speaker at least speak at the campus but it doesn't necessarily mean that i'm endorsing the conservative speaker's beliefs but i'm letting them get their point across still so that that's my personal opinion could you talk about what you think what should society be more open to accepting or at least letting other people state their perspectives or should it kind of be closed off as it is right now um i think where the path that society is going on is very dangerous um and so i'm definitely open up to, open to discussion because i'm I, i'm very hesitant in actually saying this but you know i feel like more of the what i call more the liberal left um basically their idea is more of shutting down any dissenting opinion and to an extent we're kind of seeing this with covid information where these these very qualified doctors you know i mean i listened to a podcast where this this doctor who's basically pioneered the r r or mrna vaccines is being deplatformed because he is saying hold up here i don't agree with this here you know basically throw him some ideas where but i i do think that we should open open up to discussion you know and frankly the best way to decide whether whatever someone has is, or what they're saying is good or not is by having them by listening to what they have to say i mean you don't have to agree with everything you know but you know and frankly um each side I'll, and this is kind of why i i open up people and frankly when I, i'm very uncomfortable in a room where um people think they're exactly the same way as i do is because i feel like you get you can follow i guess you can say almost well, not so follow mob mentality but like there is more of this, and- yeah or more of this group thing you know that you know that nobody's able to really think think for themselves you know i tend to lean more conservative and um i was briefly part of this uh um a conservative organization and um frankly just hearing some of they're definitely all this be means to say it they basically um i feel like we're kind of still learning how to discuss things and kind of they're more of the like the own the libs kind of crowd which you know frankly that's that's not okay because you can easily find a you can do a youtube search called dumb republicans you know and find compilations of uh, you know basically these these conservative people basically losing it so um yeah i know so answer your question i agree with open speech and you know the best way to dispel bad ideas is to listen and to debate and talk about it. like just because somebody questions what you believe doesn't necessarily mean that that you're wrong or that they're that they're right you know or that you know I mean it's not an attack on your identity it's you know talk it out list listen maybe they have some good points you've maybe never considered before so thank you so much for your insightful thoughts on religion politics economics monetary policy etc mr taggart for our listeners make sure to stay tuned for the second part of this two part series which will be released in the coming days thank you all and see you next time high school not so much a musical is hosted by ayush agarwal and nitin jaldanki narration by samhit padala music from louis luang relaxation cafe tune pocket and infraction if you like the show please recommend it to your friends and family thank you for listening and see you next time